Thank you. So this morning, please keep standing. We are having the first word this morning. And the person bringing that word is one of the best anointed teachers of God I've met in my life. I went for an outreach in the year 2017, 2018, in a village. No, 2017, yes. October, October 6. In the outreach, I was singing as I was preparing the crusade team for the crusade. But I was hearing a voice in the choir. So I was singing and I turned. There were plenty about, but one voice was just different. I will sing, I will turn. I will sing, I will turn. I'm like, who is this lady sounding my sound? So after the service, I went to her. Hello, you are sounding my sound. That was October 6th. October 12th, I came back. I said, I, it's like, I will marry you. We should continue that sound. By May 5, six months later, she followed me to the altar to say, I do. She is still sounding my sound till today. Can I introduce you to my assistant Holy Spirit? The gift of God to my life. When she came to my life, everything increased. Money increased. Fire increased. Anointing increased. My stature increased. Everything went on the increase. With Jesus' joy in your heart, welcome with me, my wife, the woman of God, Pastor Mrs. Oluwadi Femiola Wande, PMO! PMO! Is that the best you can do? Celebrate my babe! Thank you for celebrating me, but can we celebrate Jesus? Okay, you know when daddy came in yesterday, you know the way you were screaming for a man of God. Can we make a shout for the God of man? For the God of man. For the one who is on the earth and he sits in the heavens for the one who is Yahweh for Yeshua Yeshua prepared for something else but I feel in my spirit that the Lord wants us to rejoice he wants us to rejoice and if you've been attending YML you will understand that rejoicing is a weapon shouting is a weapon as you shout some things drop the things you don't want anymore they make way if you can leave your seat if you can lift your chair, make a joyful noise. Yesterday, I was able to 
establish to us that there is a war coming and God is just preparing us as soldiers. So we are warriors in the kingdom. But one major instrument that warriors use is a shout of victory. Every time there is victory, there is a shout to follow. There is a shout to follow. This is spiritual. This is spiritual. This is God. This is the move of God. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost?
I see a scepter being handed over to a person. A scepter is a symbol of authority. It's a symbol of royalty.
an elderly woman just said am I not too late to be used by God an elderly woman just said it right now am I not too old already there were so many things I wanted to do am I not too old you know what God told me to tell you scripture says about a particular group of women that receive their children back to life the mantle the Lord is releasing upon you is a mantle that can raise the dead a caprecosha the mantle the Lord wants to give to you you will lay your hands on dead children spiritually or physical and they will come back to life it is not late for you it is not too late for you there is space for you the Lord still has plans for you you are alive because he has a purpose for you you are alive because he wants to use you can you receive that word struggling to hear myself hallelujah Whew. you will get back home and people will ask you where are you coming from the Lord is in the midst of her a wall of fire round about her those little things that they have been trying to penetrate before, they can't come close anymore. 
because there is a wall of fire around you. I want to give God praise for this privilege, for making this a reality. We prayed, we asked you to come and feast with God, and you came. And we give all glory to God, to God for that. I celebrate my pastor, Pastor Daniel, and all the ministers of God in the house. We are deeply honored to have you, and we celebrate you so much. Thank you so much for coming. I celebrate every man and woman in attendance today. It's so obvious that this year's YMR is different. For us to have our first opening with daddy and mommy, it is different. And it shows the gravity of what God wants to do. So I beg you to put all of your heart in this. Put all of your heart. Make sure you don't get distracted. Make sure you, you receive what you came for. For me, I, I wrote down in my expectations some new mantles I want to receive. And every time there is a prayer, my eyes are on those mantles. God, this is my desire. And I hold on to the word of God that says the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. And if I have expectations, the Lord will meet them. That should be your, that should be your desire. You should have a strong why for why you came here. God is not joking. In fact, the devil too is not joking. So we the warriors, we can't be, we can't be found slumbering. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak, our theme says weapons of war. But then I would like to speak about the yielded vessel. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 20. Jeremiah 51, verse 20. Verse 20 and 21. One minute. Thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war. For with thee I will destroy, I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and the rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. I'll read message version for us. God says, you are my hammer, my weapon of war. I will use you to smash godless nations, use you to knock kingdoms to beat. I will use you to smash the horse and the rider. I will use you to smash chariots and drivers. I will use you to smash men and women. I will use you to smash the old man and the boy. I will use you to smash the young man and the young woman, to smash the shepherd and the sheep. I will use you to smash farmer and yoked oxen. I will use you to smash governors and senators. So when I was trying to understand who God was speaking about, because some versions would say he was talking to Cyrus, some versions would say he was talking to Babylon, but then there should be an understanding. And what nation exactly are you supposed to destroy? What kingdoms are you supposed to bring down? So I decided to start the chapter from the beginning. So if you read from verse 1, you will see, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I would raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. So the kingdom that you are supposed to destroy is Babylon. Do you understand? The kingdom that God is raising a weapon of war against is Babylon. Now I will say one or two things about Babylon, but before that, let me quickly tell you a story. 
my name is Oluwani Femi. And Oluwani Femi means God loves me. And I have seen that dimension in my life so much. That's why names are very powerful. And I made sure I named my daughter Oluwani Femi. As Oluwani Femi, as I grew up, I got attacked spiritually when I was much younger, when I was about two. And my parents said I almost died from one wicked house help that came to help, that was supposed to help, but she went the other route. But thank God for Jesus. So I got, so Jesus saved me. Growing up, I struggled with asthma and I would fall sick consecutively struggling to breathe there were times when I thought I was actually going to die but God had his way and he saved me and if you if you are in my shoes and you had so many challenges over your life growing up you're struggling to pay your fees you're going through a lot your dad abandoned you then you should know that you are one of those people that Oluwa Nife you. You are one of us. You are my tribe member. And you are one of those peculiar people. Because the devil does not waste his time on anything that will not profit him. So if you're going through challenges and through fire, it's because you're supposed to come out as gold. So I had that season growing up. But in a way, those challenges kept bringing me closer to my God. And since I was a little girl, it was so obvious that God was interested in me. It was so obvious that God was highlighting on me. I shared on my Instagram page a while ago about how I had my first three days dry fasting when I was in GS2. And almost the whole school, the whole school knew that I was fasting. I wanted to die. But I had this burning hunger for more. It has always been there. At that time, I did not have many people to look up to apart from Daddy and Mommy Gio, but they were so far. But the hunger was there. And it was obvious that the Spirit of God was doing something. So that desire was there. My mom took note, and a few people took note that God's hand is upon this child. So God has a system of highlighting over his children. As I grew up, it, be, it, be, it became clearer. As I grew up, it became clearer. So many people used to tell me then that, then that I would marry a pastor, but for me, I didn't want to marry a pastor. Mm -mm. I didn't want to have to lose my Christmas meal over fastings and praying for husband that has gone to disturb demon, that the demons will now come and try to bounce on the children. I wanted to marry a businessman that will be traveling out, will be going on holidays. You, you get, like, ah, you, you will travel, you will bring things, you will call me, I'm in the office, I'm having a board meeting, and I'll come to your office and say hello, and your staff will be saying hello to me, and you, you, I do not want the hard life. Yawoga, that kind of life, you get. So, when I was now married, it was, it was time to get married, and I wasn't even ready to get married because I wanted to pursue career and this man came with 100 naira in his bank account with many visions and dreams and the things that God wanted him to do and God was not telling me about light, darkness this is the one, blah 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 oh no was this our plan was this our agreement but it happened and gradually, this 100 naira bank account man began to look like the future that God has called him to. Then 
then it, God began even before my husband came in 2017 before I met him God began to tell me about women began to put a burden in my heart for women began to tell me about the women that are rising that God wants to raise then started to click so this is what God has been doing with my life all this while I'm telling you the story because I do not know your story but in your story you if you can think through you would realize that in one way or the other God has been highlighting on you you probably haven't been looking at it Maybe it wasn't even in your plan. But if you can think with the Holy Spirit, you would realize that God has been highlighting on you. You know why I'm sure about that? Because he brought you here. Know that we have millions of people in the world and they are not here preparing for a war. But he brought you here. So there is an enlightening upon you. And if there is an assignment for you, you need to understand that assignment. You need to understand what you are going to do with that assignment. And that is why I am telling you now about the weapons of war and the yielded vessel. Now God was saying here that he would use you as a threshing instrument, Jeremiah 51, as a destroying wind against Babylon. So I decided to look up on Babylon. From that scripture, it says that against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, God. So everything that exalts itself against God is Babylon. I decided to look through Babylon the more, and I saw that Babylon was the largest center for commerce, for art, for science, for evolution. The goddess of Babylon was goddess Ishtar, the god of sex and love. Babylon was a center for learning, scientific development. So the Holy Spirit began to make me understand that the system of the world that we are in right now is Babylon. So God has placed us in Babylon. And he says that you are here to, as a destroying wind to bring down nations and kingdoms. Are you with me? I can't hear you. Are you with me? So you need to understand that you are in the world, but you are not of the world. But there are kingdoms that you are supposed to bring down. There are territories, there are nations that you're supposed to bring down. He has anointed you, he is preparing you, he is ordaining you for that assignment. So you cannot say, I'm living my life. You are not living your life. You are living a warrior's life. And a warrior does not have his own life. You are on assignment. Every year we try to make this understanding that every believer we know that we are on assignment. So wherever that mountain of influence that God has placed you, you must rise up and take over that territory. You must rise up and mount over the king, the palaces and the thrones of that kingdom. Last year, God made me sit and study Esther. Esther was this little naive girl. And I, I spoke about her in the, the book, The Becoming. And The Becoming is available for you to get. And we still have a discount price today. But after today, the price will change. Hallelujah. So Esther was this little naive girl that rose up to the highest peak of the throne then. She became the wife of the king. Her purpose was not just to become the wife of the king. Her purpose was to bring down the kingdom of Aman. Her purpose 
was not just to become the CEO. A purpose was not just to become the managing director, but to bring down the kingdom of arts, of entertainment, of economics, of healthcare. A purpose was not to ride in big cars and then there's an entourage coming behind her and then she has millions in her account. A purpose was to be a vessel, a weapon of war to bring down nations. So much that the children of God that were in obscurity before came to limelight just by the rising up of a weapon. By the rising of Esther, God lifted his own people. God showed me another person in the Bible and his name was Daniel. And Daniel was physically in Babylon. But Daniel was a prince. He was, he was royalty. And God made me understand that the first weapon you need to overcome Babylon is that you become the child of the king, which is your salvation. You will not fight this war if you are not saved. You will not fight this war without the Holy Ghost. Have that consciousness within you that I'm on a battleground and I'm, I need to fight this battle with the Holy Spirit. I'll rush through this because we have a long way. I have seven things here about Daniel that God used as a weapon. But one thing I want to establish before I give you the seven points is just like Pastor was saying yesterday, a weapon will not shoot itself. A gun, for example, will not shoot itself. It has to be yielded to the user. That weapon has to be yielded to the person that is handling the, the weapon. So I am a weapon in the hands of God. And I will yield myself to God to use me the way he wants. So every day I will make a declaration. God, I am available for you. Make me what you want to use me for. I am a yielded vessel for you. I have first heard this for, from Ketun Coleman. That God doesn't just use vessels. He uses yielded vessels. So if you're not going to yield yourself to God, then you're not ready to be used by him. But how many of us here are ready to be used by God? How many of us are ready to be weapons of war? Hallelujah. Now there are different weapons. If you look at the gun, for example, you have the rifle, you have different types of guns, you have the shotgun, you have revolvers for different purposes. But some are higher than the other. Some are more useful than the other. There are some that you cannot take to the wall. There are some that they will just be behind. There are some that will be as backup. And there are some that will be used for the main things. I'm sharing my expectations for why I'm out with you today. My own desire is that I become a mighty weapon in his hands. That he needs to destroy a territory in more way and he calls me. That he needs to destroy a territory in Canada and he says, Nifemi, you are the one going for me. And even if, he cannot, if I cannot get to Canada in that instant, I can fly in the spirit. I can go on my knees on intercession and things will make way I know I know that if God will use us to win the world we will need more than laying hands on headache and headache recovers we will need more than that we will need the prophetic we will need anointing we will need working of miracles we will need great mighty working of the spirit and that is what I came here for you're not going to face Babylon joking. You're not going to face Babylon with, with, with little weapons. You need to be fortified. 
And God will only fortify yielded vessels. So I ask of you that you please make a decision today to be a yielded vessel unto God. I'll quickly share about Daniel and we end this. Daniel had the identity of a prince, which was a salvation. Even in Babylon, number two, even in Babylon, he did not hide his identity. He was bold about it. So when he is in board meetings, when he is in the public, on his Instagram page, he made a declaration so that you know where he belongs. We are not trying to check if this person is saved or not. We are not trying to ask, maybe, maybe she's still trying to be saved. Is this one even born again at all? There was a declaration of who Daniel was. So he asked of the Enoch, I cannot defile myself. Whatever the king is asking for, I can't defile myself. Number three is that he was good with his job. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 20, it was recorded that Daniel became 20 times better than his colleagues. So he was good with what he was doing. If we're going to bring down the kingdoms in Babylon, we're going to be excellent at it. I know all of us are trying to work at it. We are trying to become better. But because our God is excellent, we cannot bring anything less. If you will take over the nations and the kingdoms of Babylon, then we have to be good at what God has called us for. If he has called you to serve under somebody, you will be good at it. In your place of work, as an entrepreneur, whatever the Lord has placed in you, you must be good at what you do. Even in, in, in coaching, in whatever you are doing, you are doing it as a prophet of God with your spiritual gifts manifesting. We need to begin to enforce spiritual into our daily life. Retreat should not be a time you set apart alone. Retreat should be a daily life. So we need to set ourselves right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you go to your place of work, as you come to church, you understand who you are. You understand your identity. Daniel was a man of prayer. He always gave glory to God. So much that when they wanted to get at him, they said that the only way you can get Daniel is against this God. What can be said about you? What can be said about you? If we're going to take over Babylon, then we need to know what we're we are doing. Daniel was an intercessor. He was interceding for the, the restoration of Jerusalem. Daniel, this one. Daniel entered the lion's den for the kingdom. In the assignment that God has given to us, there are places we would have to enter. There are things we would have to do. There are assignments that God will give us. There are some dangerous places, some dangerous things He will tell us to do. But I beg you to please obey. As you go into the year 2022, as the Lord gives you instructions, please obey and always apply the wisdom of Jesus. Then finally, Daniel remained consistent and unwavering. He was consistent. Daniel was a yielded vessel. And when God wanted to speak about his own intention, and I'm rounding up with this, when God wanted to tell the world about his intention, in Daniel chapter 9, an angel appeared unto Daniel and began to show him revelations of the intention of God. The intention of God for every believer, the intention of God for every Christian is that we rise in the kingdom and the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of our God. The intention of God 
is that the sons and daughters of God will rise in influence and take over Babylon to the glory of God. That is the intention of God. That is the divine mandate of God. That is the will of God for every believer that you will rise. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So no more hiding at the back. No more trying to dim your light. You do not put on the candle and put it under a bushel. You are not just supposed to light your family. You are supposed to light the world. You are not just supposed to light the church. You are supposed to light Babylon. You are supposed to stand as a light, as an oracle. That when they are looking for somebody that can interpret the king's dream, they will look for you. Arise and shine in YMR 2021. God is saying to you, arise and shine. God is saying to you that you are my weapon of war. And if you would just yield yourself to me, I will use you as a destroying wind to bring down nations. Nations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Territories that have prevented the kingdom of God from being established. Territories that have prevented the word of God from getting to the nations. It will raise you as a kingdom ambassador, as a voice to the nations. That when you speak, every nation will listen to you. It will not just make you a weapon of war in your wounds. It will make you a weapon of war to the nation. So the preparation you are taking here is not just for two days and it is off. What God is doing is a decade thing. In five, ten years to come, this meeting will be remembered because you will receive the mantles and the mandates as God's weapons of war. A destroying wind. A wind is not something that you can catch. A wind is not something that you can subdue. A wind is not something you can say this is where it is going. It is yielded to the Lord. So wherever the Lord directs the wind, it goes. This meeting is for you to hear, for you to know, for you to understand the work that he has called you for as his weapon of war. And I want you as to go through 2022, always put it in your mind that everywhere I find myself, I am a weapon of war. And there is a territory I need to bring down. There is a nation I must subdue. There is a kingdom I must subdue. Right up on your feet.
One minute, one minute. Can you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost? Can you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost? Can you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost? Father, we give you praise. 